Speakers on? Yeah, is it working? They're not on yet. Oh. Shit, there should be sound. That makes sound. Let me do it. There it is. There. Oh. Whoa. Oh, it's your your sound is. Your sound is not um, your OBS. It's coming through your um, MacBook. You need to change the settings on uh, StreamYard. Oh. Give me 
Should I keep check? Am I on the air? Okay. Should I talk now? Okay, here we go. We're back. Hey, welcome to the back of Goner Records, where we broadcast Goner TV every couple of weeks, letting you know about things in the air around us, about uh, artists and Memphis people and whoever else sends us weird stuff to show you. Uh, this week, we got a video from a band, Predator. Their new album comes out today on Total Punk Records. Um, something to check out. That video will be coming back. Also, we'll be doing the third installment of my video game segment, Did They Really? I'm looking forward to trying once again. We got two guys, Josh and Joey, who are going to be uh, over there waiting in, and they're going to win big prizes answering questions. Uh, but first, I've got a couple of things I've got to bring up about some comments that I've made on the show. Uh, we're going to do a quick corrections here, because last week I had said that uh, Ed Lover from MTV's The uh, 
you know, MTV raps had passed away. And I said that just because I had heard it. And I forget that I'm talking in front of people. And we already apologized for that. And we already know now that Ed Lover is doing fine and that that was my mistake. And since that happened, people have also sent in a bunch of other things uh, that I've said wrong. So thanks a lot for that. I guess we're going to go over all of them right now, get that out of the way. Uh, the first thing here is Anthony Edwards evidently was not in Weekend at Bernie's. I thought Anthony Edwards was in Weekend at Bernie's. It was my mistake. It was Jonathan Silverman I was thinking of. And if you look at them together, they're very similar. Uh, I should mention these corrections aren't just things I've said on the show. It's just shit I've said. And for some reason, my friends can't let this go. So they want me to uh, admit to some of these things. This one I have a little bit of a problem with because I never said I was in an elevator with Sarah Jessica Parker. I said I was in an elevator with a woman who looked like Sarah Jessica Parker. And that part of the story is true. And what was weird about it was she was wearing this Panama hat. Now, if you look like and it was like over her eyes and she was trying not to look at me, people generally try not to look at me in elevators anyway. But I will say, if you're wearing a Panama hat over your eyes and you look a little bit like Sarah Jessica Parker, I think you're bringing that on yourself a little bit. But I, I, the thing is, is I thought I was in an elevator with Sarah Jessica Parker. And then I saw the same woman in an elevator later, and it was not at all. It didn't look anything like her. She did wear the Panama hat the second time. Uh, this is one that irritates me that my mother always says, too. I was not afraid to walk in the woods because I had just seen the Blair Witch Project that one time. I was afraid to walk in the woods because my mother told me to look out for snakes as I was walking out there. And I didn't know anything about snakes. I had told her I'd seen the Blair Witch Project. For years, she tells people that I was afraid of the Blair Witch Project. But really what it was, was she told me to watch out for snakes as I was walking out the door. I didn't know how likely it was that I was going to encounter a snake. So uh, I think that was a reasonable beef. Anyway, those are my corrections for this week. I'm sure more people will call in personally to me and tell me the things I've said wrong over the years. Um, for now, we're going to get on. Oh, so, we, so here's the big thing. Our big segment this week, we got JB from Aquarium Blood. He's been on the show a few times, both as a musician and as a, a guest and a disembodied voice. And uh, he's got this new thing he did called 901 Track Mine, where he talks to somebody about something real specific musical. And tonight <laughs> he's talking to Graham Winchester about something. And uh, he's a wild one and apparently did a really good job on this. We're looking forward to seeing it. And we're going to show it to you right now on Goner Television. We got to show the video. Or... <laughs> so what happens next? Yeah, <laughs> am, I, am I still relevant? Here to the ground, hearing the sound, here it is now. I know one track mind. Hello, friends. On this episode of 901 Track Mind, we're at the world-famous Sun Studio in Memphis, Tennessee to talk to Graham Winchester about his song, First Memory. Graham is a singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and all-around musical badass. He plays in more bands than you can shake a drumstick at, but here's a few of them. The Sheiks and Jack O, Turnstiles, So Gung Ho, Cassette Set, Devil Train, MDs, Tennessee Screamers, Raining Sound, and of course, Graham's Solo Jams, which is what we'll be talking about today with his track, First Memory. He's also a tour guide at Sun Studio. First Memory was recorded at Sun Studio. Now let's hear from Graham about the origin, arrangement, lyrics, and recording of the song. First memory was, like a lot of my songs, they just kind of happen. You know, I'm not really trying to write a song when I write songs. It just kind of comes up out of the ground kind of thing. I was reading something that was talking about somebody's very first memory. Like if you really close your eyes and 
meditate and think about like the first thing you remember as a human being. And I started doing that and it, and it occurred to me that the first thing I remember happening in my entire life ever was taking a nap in a crib at my grandma, my Nana's house. And I remember being in the crib and I had to have been maybe two, you know, it was just, and I don't remember anything else up until I was four or five. So this is like that one off memory from when you're way too young to really, to be remembering anything. But I remember her coming in there and just seeing this bright shining light. And I remember feeling an enormous amount of love because she's the best. And, and she's actually my only living uh, grandparent still. So Nana, if you see this, love you. But I remember her like leaning over the crib bars. And I remember seeing her hands. I remember going in her Minnesota accent. Did you have a good snows? <laughs> and it was just like, I still can hear it in my head. And that's what kind of trips me out about the human mind is like, I can remember 20, 31 years later, her exact tone. And when she said that, did you have a good snows? And like, it's my first memory. But I just wanted to write a song that really put that memory in that moment into, into a song and a melody and some lyrics. So that's where it came from. <laughs> So for the arrangement for First Memory, I almost thought of it lyrically first because I wanted, I became a dad four years ago. I now have two, I have a four-year-old named Everly and a three-year-old named Miles. Musical names, of course, but, but I remember tucking them in, tucking Everly in. And I remember thinking, you know, this could be his first memory. You know, like, so right around the time I wrote the song, I became a dad. And I'm sitting there thinking about this concept for a song at the same time I'm talking Everly in. And I was like, oh my God, that's it. The, I want the first verse to be about my grandma tucking me in as my first memory. And then the second verse, the possibility that this moment right now could be my son's first memory. Yeah, so two verses, one about my first memory and one about Everly's first memory. And I knew I just wanted to keep the song simple since it's about being an infant and in, in your first memory. So I just thought, well, if I could just have a little intro and then a verse and, and a, I want the chorus to be simple. So the chorus is literally, you heard me softly say, I love you. It's just the phrase, I love you, which is probably the most common lyric ever. But I wanted that simplicity for a song and, and something about a childhood memory. Um, so yeah, it's just an intro, we got a verse, got a chorus, another verse, a chorus, and then this long instrumental fade out with synthesizers and, and trippiness. <laughs> an acoustic kind of just strumming the chords to the intro and the verse and my buddy Jeff Smith who plays in several bands here in town and he has a great uh, Instagram called campfires and synthesizers synthesizers so give that a follow he literally plays synthesizers around different campfires around town it's awesome he actually brought one of his little synthesizers to work and so I'm on one side of the room and then I realized we're just coincidentally jamming in the same key. And I was like, oh my God, that synth sound is what the song needs. That is gonna be what drives the song. And I wanted that blanket synth because synthesizers that are real patty like that are very comforting to me. And it was almost like the blanket that was around me in the crib during, on that day when I had that first memory. So I wanted that just like ethereal, warm, soft tone of his synth with the acoustic guitar which also gives me that mix of organic acoustic instrument meets robot, you know, synth action. And it, I think it just really worked together and the song just came together. We got in here and he put an electronic drum beat on one of his synths and then just, we went to town with his other synthesizers and effects pedals and blended that with my vocal and the falsetto vocal and the acoustic. And I, I really am happy with the result.
I thought we were gonna do the intro, but <laughs> yeah, just you want to start. Hey, we're back. I don't, I don't hear myself at all because I have headphones on now. Okay, good. Uh, so wasn't that great? That was JB from Aquarian Blood and his new little bit of journalism. Uh, that was a, a great show. I hope we get to see more of those from him. Now we're gonna start uh, the next segment. We're gonna start with. Uh, with the third episode of Did They Really? The Game Show. Welcome. I'm not supposed to hear myself in the headphones. No. no. Okay. Welcome to the show, everybody. We're back with another installment of Did They Really? The game show where you try to figure out, am I telling the truth or am I telling a lie? Tonight, we have two new contestants on the show that have not been on the show before. We have Josh. Can you say hello, Josh? Hello. Hey, Josh. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling from Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. I've heard of that. Yeah, that place is famous. You enjoy living in Austin? Uh, it's a little too hot, but it's okay. Other than the heat, it's a lot of fun. That's the headline from Josh. Joey, we also have on the line right now. Joey, where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from my mom's attic in Bartlett. Uh, attic in Bartlett. That sounds nice. Uh, is that a new condo development over there, or is that? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, no, uh, it's just it's the uh, it's one I found. <laughs> and you it's found it. In it. I, I think I could almost see a, my mom's attic in Bartlett as uh, as a new development. Well, this has been fun, so let's move on to the show. What happens here is I read facts, and you guys try to tell me whether or not the facts are true or not. The facts may be incorrect, but it's all silly trivia. You guys ready to play the game? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thanks for being here, too. We really appreciate your time. I did a fake uh, coin toss. So we're going to start with Josh in Austin, Texas. The first question, Josh, is about the video game Pac-Man. Are you familiar about Pac-Man? I've heard of it, yeah. Okay. Pac-Man features the ghosts. The ghosts are named Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. However, in Miss Pac-Man, the ghosts have different names. Those names are Whopper, Chopper, Blinky, and Sue. Josh, did they really? I think that is false. You are correct. Although, so Josh gets a point. Although, uh, they did change one ghost name. They chose to change Clyde to Sue, but uh, the names that I read were not, in fact, the Miss Pac-Man characters. All right. Joey has a chance to answer. Joey, are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, how is your knowledge on rhinoceros? Uh, ooh, you know. Well, let me, lay it, let me lay it on you. The female rhinoceros have longer and thinner horns than their male counterparts. Did they really? You know, I'm going to go with they had the same. That an Sorry. Uh, that is the wrong answer. Sorry, Joey. It's a strange thing, but actually rhinoceros, female rhinoceros, have longer and thinner horns than male rhinoceros. So that's one way you can tell them apart in a nightclub. So Joey's a little behind, uh, but he will have plenty of chances to catch up in the rest of the game. We're back to Josh. Josh, how do you feel about the film Purple Rain? Seen it a few uh, times? Uh, it's been a very long time. All right. Well, let's see. In his hit film Purple Rain, Prince's character had no proper name. Josh, did they really? Uh, I'm going to say that is true. Josh, you're correct. For some reason, Prince was only known as the kid 
in uh, uh, Purple Rain. A lot of the other characters use, like Morris Day and Apollonia, use their real names. The prince is never mentioned to have a real, actual name in the film. All right, Joey, you ready for the next one? I guess. All right, Joey, you can catch up here. In Charlie Chaplin's 1921 film, The Kid, the actor that played the kid went on to play Grandpa Munster in the popular TV show, The Munsters. Joey, did they really? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with yes. Joey, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The kid... In uh, Charlie Chaplin's 1921 film, the kid actually did go on to be an actor, but he played Uncle Fester in uh, The Addams Family. Uh, the, the actor's name was Jackie Coogan. Sorry, Joey, we got two to zero, man, but we still we got a face-off round that's right. more questions for you. So, okay, All right, okay. Josh, you're up next. You ready? I'm ready, and I once ran into Grandpa L. Lewis. Did you really? And he told me to F off. Yeah, you know, he was apparently a very abrasive and, and not a very fun old man. I, I've, I've heard a lot of stories like that. Yeah. He was, a, he was a, in his youth, he was a Coney Island hawker. I saw that on the Ken Burns thing about Coney Island. He was uh, one of those guys that said, come on in and see naked women or whatever. So, All right, Josh, you're up. Uh, we got a question for you about seahorses. Seahorses take more mates than any other sea animal. Josh, do they really? I'm going to say that's false. Man, Josh, I'm, unfortunately for Joey, you're killing it. That is not true. Seahorses are one of the very few sea animals that actually mate for life. I don't know it's where like Josh, Josh got sent the questions ahead of time tonight. Sorry about this. But he's killing it. He's uh, got three on the board. Joe, are you ready for your last uh, in-play question? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right. The American television show The Office was adopted from a British television show of the same name. What a lot of people don't know is the British TV show was adapted from an Indian TV show of the same name. Joey, did they really? Uh, you know... I'm going to say that's false. You are correct, Joey. That is not true. The Office was uh, written by a couple of British guys. Back in the game, because we have a face-off round, and this next last question is worth three points, so it's still anybody's game. Are we ready for a face-off? Guys, are we ready for a face-off? Yes. yes. Well, let's play. Let's okay. play the face. Then let's play the... All right, guys, what happens here is, is I give you three answers to one question. Two of the answers are correct. One is not correct. You guys ready for this one? Oh, and both of you, both of you answer. Sorry, I didn't mention that. This is for both. This is points on both on the board for both of you. I forgot. How did we do this? We did it one at a time last time, right? Yep. Okay, that's right. That's how we have to do this. So we'll start with Joey this time. Joey. Bob okay. Geldof directly offended two of these three artists with comments he made about them while organizing the legendary 1985 event Live Aid. Adam Ant, the Hooters, Led Zeppelin. One of those um, is not correct. Two of them is, Joey. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Hooters and Adam Ant. All right. And Josh, what is your answer to the question? Do you want it again? Uh, no, I, um, so I'm guessing which ones he did. Uh, which, uh, he offended two of these three artists, Adam Ant, the Hooters, Led Zeppelin. Uh, I'm going to guess uh, Adam Ant and, uh, yeah, the Hooters. 
Well, you guys tied on the final round, so Josh is the winner tonight. Um, so Bob Geldof uh, actually called Adamant's manager looking for Sting's number, and when he asked him, was he considering Adamant for the show, he had said that Adamant was passe, and it got back to him. Adamant eventually did do a number at Live Aid, but he regrets doing it because he was angry about being called passe, which I thought was a strange thing because, you know, he would have been about the same age. And, and you know, as Bob Geldof or in that area, I thought it was kind of weird that he said that. And uh, Geldof said when he found out the Hooters were opening in Philadelphia, uh, Geldof said, who the fuck are the Hooters? Uh I chose Led Zeppelin as the phony in there because a lot of people thought that Led Zeppelin didn't do very well at Live Aid, but Geldof was one of the ones that said it out loud. So, Joey, we have cons consolation prizes for you for your participation. We thank you for coming in. What, it was, what do we got? We got something good. So you're going to stay on with Joey and do that. And, Josh, you are the winner of Did They Really Tonight. Ah. Your knowledge of... Your knowledge of either pop culture or whether I'm not telling the truth is acute. You can put that on your resume. I I will next to being cute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. That's the show. Thanks for uh, thanks for being on with us, guys. We really appreciate your time, and uh, we got some gift certificates and Ghana related stuff for you. So stay on with Zach, and he will work out those details. Oh, we've we've, we've got an interruption in the feed here. What's happening? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm at the bar, but uh, I can do this for just a second. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's true. It's the Count of Monte Cristo. I believe that's uh, correct. Um, and you asked, NFTs are non-fungible tokens, and they could be a picture or a painting or a picture of a painting. And they're on the blockchain. No, I'll be right with you. Just a second. No, I'm, I'm doing something. Uh, so, yeah. So, NFTs, they live forever, basically. And uh, let's see. Um, Cabaza de Vaco. <laughs> Lester Bang's bath salts? None of those were the correct answers to any of the questions I asked tonight. So, uh um, but you, but to as a, as a consolation, you are in third no, place. No, so no, that no, makes no. it. I, I I'm on a game show right now. I'll get your beer in just a second. Yeah. What's the question? Okay, here it is. Bob Geldof directly offended two of these three artists with comments he made about Jake them. Floyd, uh, it was uh, Susie, Susie and the Banshees. Uh huh. Pink Floyd, and um, I think the third was. Uh, Shit. If he said the Hooters, that would be great. Was it the just, Hooters? It was the Hooters. Oh my God. I can't <laughs> believe you got that. All right. uh, so I got it? You got that correct. So what do I win? Oh, no, you have to you have to talk to the producer about that. Just he wait, will... I'll get your burger in just a minute. I'm doing a game <laughs> show. So what do I win? Uh, you win like some gift certificates and and, oh, uh, and a t shirt. Okay. And a copy of our home game. Yeah, and uh, come come uh, come visit the lamplighter, y'all. The, the copy of lounge. the copy of our home game means oh, that okay. I come over to your house and talk to you about trivia for three hours, <laughs> and you feed you feed me. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I can bring you some lamplighter food. Yeah. So get ready for that. That's what you okay. won. <laughs> three, hour, three hours with me talking to you about trivial things and, yeah, sounds cle great. and cleaning uh, out your refrigerator. I'm going to go make these burgers. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Goner, for uh, having me. Um, I will get your fucking beer in just a second. <laughs> thank you for having me. And I'm, I'm expecting uh, something in the mail very soon. So thank you. Yeah, and uh, come visit the Lamplighter Lounge. We yeah. actually met, we actually got something to thank the you. ladder. That's right down the street. Hey, but thank I, you for the Hooters. Yeah, thank you, Hooters. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say the Hooters one more time. Get back to work, right, Jesse. Right. Uh, chat question. If, if all right, there's a chat question. What do I do with the chat question? I just answer it. 
The answer is no. I win a t-shirt and a gift certificate for them. Is there anyone out there? I don't know if there is. <laughs> is there anyone in the chat? Am, am I still being broadcast right yes, now? Yeah, okay. We are, doing, we are doing the chat question. Chat question. Cool. Yeah, we do the chat question as part of the show. And if you answer, you get a prize. You really do. I mean, we send these things out. I don't know if anybody appreciates them, but we do send them out. <laughs> Nothing? No, you can ask. Let's just ask. Okay. You want me to read the question? Yeah, read the question. Okay. Did they really? Chat question right now. The anaconda's mating ritual can last for more than a month. Chat people, did they really? First one to answer gets it. That's hot. <laughs> but is it true? Did I make it up? <laughs> it's possible it's not true. Gian Prime says yes. Oh, uh, that's correct. Anacondas get twisted up and, and have to match parts, and it takes them over a month to get it right, and uh, uh, they can be mating for quite some time. Ken Prime, you are the, the chat winner. winner, and the chat winner wins. Uh, we got to solidify what these prizes are so I can say it, but there'll be yeah, something you could use. Of either the, yeah, oh, that's right. The Aquarian Blood Record in limited tangerine vinyl, or if you already have that, your choice of Goner t shirt. Great. Thank you, Don Pardo. Thank you, disembodied voice. Well, that's, I don't know how to end that. You know what we need to do next time. So I keep a list of what we did right and wrong on Did They Really? This is our third one. And uh, the next episode, we're going to write a fucking ending for it is what we're going to do. Because <laughs> I have no idea what we're doing right now. So uh, let's move on. But thanks for watching that. And... Next is coming up is the Predator video I mentioned earlier. Their album is out today on Total Punk. You should enjoy that and uh, find the record and enjoy it. And you're watching Goner Television.
Hey, hey. How's it going? Good to see you there. I'm Chris. I'm Amy. And we're Sonosphere. Thanks for joining us. I bet you're wondering what we're listening to right now. This album is Cold Showers Loving Regret from Deus Records. On this album, I really love the track So I Can Grow. And this album did come out in 2012, but it has remained a constant on my uh, stereo. My first album I'm recommending is by Kunayuki Takahashi. He's a Japanese DJ known for ambient and deep house. Uh, he shares his early material with us on this early tape works from 1986 to 1993. This is the first volume of two on the Music from Memory label. And it highlights more atmospheric and ambient tunes with bits of noise and EDM sprinkled in a little bit. I would check out the Memory uh, music from Memory Label. Uh, the whole catalog has interesting electronic and experimental tunes from all around the world. This album is the debut from David Lace, owner of Detriti Records, his dark wave project, Ascending. And my favorite track on this is the very first track, Une Note Che Non Passa. Born Bad Records, based in France, brings more fuzz and infused rock from Francophiles, but these folks are coming from an island in the Indian Ocean called Mauritius, a tax haven for the rich in a French colony until its independence in the 1960s. These celebratory tunes come from the 1970s and are fuzzy, psychedelic soul from artists like Harold Beatty, T. Afrique, and Claudio. I love Claudio's tune, which we're hearing here, on this stellar funky compilation. The cover art is pretty sweet too. Inside you'll find photos of the artists and people of the island posing with their fishies, like looking at an old family photo album if your family was from an island near Madagascar. This is Edward Artemyev's score for the Andrei Tarkovsky films, Solaris, The Mirror, and Stalker. Tarkovsky is one of my favorite directors, and Stalker is easily a top five film. There is a wonderful story written in Russian and English in the inner folds that tells a tale of Yingve Mirzin creating a synthesizer called the ANS. He thought no musician was creative enough to play the instrument until he met Artemyev, and the rest is history. Right now you're hearing I Go Long from the album, or the film, Stalker. And last, we have Zhru Vogue. Originally released in 1982, the Dark Entries label brings us this delightful reissue of the Dada goodness from these fellas, Andrew, Rick, and Patrick from the Bay Area. They bring surrealist indie rock in a postmodern early 80s Cali way. Zhru Vogue's first single, Naquita Dream, is an early post-punk classic. Catch that song on this album and many more Dada-inspired tunes. Do the Zhru!
Hey there, we're back, and uh, that looks like the end of the show for tonight. We enjoyed the uh, Predator music video, um, the Sonosphere record. Rex, want to thank them for that. Thanks again to JB for that Night on One Track Mind segment, and thanks again to Josh from Texas, Austin, Texas, and Joey from uh, the attic of his mom's house in Bartlett for playing. Did they really? I've been enjoying putting that together. And I hope you enjoyed looking at it. Uh, next show is in two weeks, July 2nd. Optic Sync will be playing here live, like in the store, like live performance. Yes. So back in the back of the store here will be a band performing music. And uh, anything else of note? More. Uh, what the? What is? Oh, Big Clown is going to be on GTV on the 16th. So we got some live music coming up in July. July is live music month here on the show. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have our our usual uh, collection of sent-in things and whatnot. Until then, I guess I'll just say goodnight. I don't know what else we got to do today. Hope you guys have a good couple of weeks. Come in the store, see some of the new stock. And, uh... I don't know if you're if you're out of town, go to a different store and check out the stock. See what they got. Write us, drop us a line, let us know. Nobody send any postcards anymore. If uh, yeah, if, if you guys feel like sending a postcard, I'll put the board back up with all the postcards on it. You can let me know what records you're buying in other stores, <laughs> and I'll read it online. I'll read it out loud, and uh, you know that'll be ex- exciting. <laughs> for somebody I don't know. uh no actually that would be kind of interesting wouldn't it It'd be fun because you know we get a lot of the same stock as a lot of places around the country you know so it's fun to see what people are into uh, outside of memphis until then we're here in memphis and we're all going to be here ready for next two weeks from now and the store will be here and uh we'll say good night thanks for the show and uh thanks for watching good night <laughs>